What's going on beautiful people? Thank you for returning back to my channel, The Root Wave. In this episode, I have Jay from Aquarian Insight. Please say hello. Let us know where we can find you. And then um, if you could just tell us a little bit of what you do, please. Okay, I'm Jay and Aquarian Insight. I'm from Aquarian. I always say I'm from Aquarian Insight. It should be, I am Aquarian Insight, but I say from. That's true. Um, so my channel is called Aquarian Insight. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, all over the place. And um, I'm a tarot reader. So you'd say what I do is tarot. But what I have, I think, is my own spirituality, my own messages. What I say is you can only share what you have experienced. So I share my own path and what I've learned and my own journey with other people and what people get out of it, they get out of it. But that is the spirituality and the messages behind the messages that I bring from the tarot. I guess that's the filter you could say that I am for the messages that come through. Right. Um, and I thank you very much for being on my channel. This is very humbling for me because you're one of the people that I consider like a guide in my life. Um, it's, Thanks, weird. You, <laughs> it's weird because I remember where I was when I discovered you. <laughs> I was oh in, um, I was on vacation, um, vacation, I want to say, but I actually, it was more of a spiritual journey that I took, um, just to kind of, uh, tie some loose ends with family. Um, and I, and then somehow during that, that journey, I just found you. And I remember the first reading that I saw from you, I was like, Oh my God this woman has just changed everything because i was just getting into the that aspect of astrology the tarot reading just just a little bit of everything right what, whatever spirituality whatever my journey was that's where i was at the moment and i just felt mm -hmm. like i wasn't understanding too much of what was happening with the other people that i was listening to or just paying attention to or learning from right because i was trying to take it with a grain of salt but it's so weird how as much as you want to take it with a grain of salt, you still take that stuff very seriously because once you start hearing things that match, now you start becoming a little obsessive about it. And you're like, you know, I, what, what's my next message, right? Am I connected this week? How come that didn't resonate with me? Maybe that will resonate with me. Oh, my God. And then some people get like really paranoid about it. And then it turns into like a hot mess. And I felt like, honestly, when I discovered you, I wasn't going through that, but I was almost like, I could see where this can go wrong. And then I found you and I was like, oh my God, you see, this is what I've been talking about. Where I've, I felt like I wanted someone to discuss and openly say, hey, this may not resonate with you. This, you know, you got to take it with a grain of salt. You can't, um, um, what is it that the line that you use? Um, I always say never give up your power to a tarot reading or to a tarot reader. Exactly. So you can't say it any better than that because it's the truth. Um, um, so basically what I want to do in this interview, even though I would love to interview you top to bottom because uh, <laughs> people like you are fascinating, right? Where you're just like, I want to hear your story. I want to say that I want to leave that for another time and I'd rather um, just address a, a bunch of questions that I have when it comes to spirituality, tarot. And then also we decided to um, ask your audience as well for some questions which they submitted and I have some here that we're also going to go over. Um, we're They're so amazing. I was so oh, amazed yeah. at the response. Yeah, amazing, amazing, amazing. I really appreciate it to, to the people watching that, that submitted their questions and participated. I really appreciate that. It makes this a lot better because you want the point of this video for me is to kind of just clarify and give better advice on how to receive all this energy and guidance that we are getting. Because we're in a time of people giving us all this energy and guidance and then a lot of us going, what do we do with it? And then there's a lot mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. there's a lot of ego, there's a lot of manipulation, there's a lot of commercializing that's happening with spirituality that honestly, for me, I'm like, we're going to go down a slippery slope if we don't kind of address it now. And that's, that's kind of been like my thing and then running into you and then it's all coming back together right now, full circle, which is amazing because now we get the opportunity to speak about this and maybe have this video be like a, a, um, a guide to all of, all of this that we're about to discuss. Um, yeah. So, and I, I really appreciate Jay. Um, if there's anything that you want to add before I start, please do. No, you're good. Let's go. Yeah. I love this. Person. <laughs> this is, you know what? It's literally because I posted earlier that I was coming down with something, and we just talked about this. That you know, it's like a detox and whatever it is, and and you know, a lot of people are like take care of yourself. Don't do it. And I have these conversations all the time. This is my life. So this is not like I have to put on my tarot hat or anything. This is life. So let's do it. Let's get yes. into some of this stuff. Let's do it um let me see what i have here let's start with let's start with how you um came upon doing tarot okay i actually took up the tarot to disprove it mm -hmm. um i come from an atheistic background and i was very much i'm a scientist 
I don't believe in any of this kind of stuff. And I got newsletters from um, the, I think I was a member of the British Society of Psychical Research. And they did all these kind of studies in the newsletters. And I thought, oh, it'd be fun if I could do it. You know, if I, let me try it out. Because I was always of the belief, even when I was an atheist, I studied religion. Mm -hmm. So how, how can you say you don't believe something if you don't know what you don't believe? Exactly. So I was, very, I was very big on that. So I thought, let's check out this tarot thing. And so I'd experiment on people. And then, then you start seeing messages and the reactions from people. And I thought, oh, my God, this is actually helping people. And so I had like a kind of, I don't know, I had a strange, I always say I'm a reluctant, I was always a reluctant tarot card reader because I come from a corporate background. I come from this kind of, I'm a scientist because my family's very religious and I think I wanted to, you know, you rebel against what you've, what you're grown up with. Mm -hmm. And I'm not doing any of this. I'm a, you know, a liberal thinker. I'm a scientific thinker. I think you just get pulled into it. You can't avoid it when it's your path. And I kept coming back to it. I always say tarot is like a Rorschach test for the soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it, that's why another one of my sayings is the message isn't the message, your reaction to the message is the message and it helps you to explore who you are and it helped me a lot in my life when i was going through difficult times yeah i mean it sounds like you went through the same thing that i did um also i come from corporate america business person i mean you know very materialistic as well like just all this other stuff right that's going on and then you realize one day that um i'm very curious about life and then i just started researching things right i used to be an altar boy or two for a couple of years so i definitely understand that um, but then what happened is I, I just, a lot of my, my foundation is based on just logic, you know, honesty, yeah. truth, integrity, right? That's, that's, that's big for me. And that led me, um, which a lot, a lot of, I think a lot of the questions I would receive was like, how do we start this journey? Right. Or how do we know that mm -hmm. we're supposed to go on this journey? But I just feel like a big part of my journey was just searching the truth or whatever the truth for me was and I, I don't care about what the truth for anyone else was i just wanted life to seem comfortable and pieced together um and balanced i guess um it's the best way to put it um and that kind of led me to just uh astrology the tarot um numerology um now i <laughs> i even discovered a little bit of like um, the tea cup readings or the coffee cup readings. And I'm like, yeah, the tea leaves. Tea yeah, leaves. exactly. And then the yeah. palm reading. And I'm like, we don't understand that there's a science to this. And when I hit all these, you know, all these guides and all these methods, I just was like, wow, it's, it's not a coincidence. It's not a mistake that all these things actually portray some type of sign or message to you, you know, and, and it's possible. Agree. But yeah, I didn't. Yeah, sorry. Go no, no, go ahead, go, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, I didn't actually even start off with tarot. Mm -hmm. I was 12 years old and I read, um, I used to go into the adult side of the library. And this, I'm old. So, you know, back in the day, I was used to go to the library and I had a library card. And my mum was big on us reading. Um, and I picked up a Linda Goodman astrology book and I was 12. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started off. And I thought, oh my God, wow, this. And I was kind of comparing, is this what this person's like? Is this what this person's like? It was always to understand people. Right. That's how it started off. And I've studied palmistry, runes. Um, I didn't do tea leaves. Actually, I did try it once and it was just too messy and stuff. So I didn't do it. But there were so many things. And tarot for me was where I kind of landed because it allowed me to explore like from my own perspective like you said your own truth comes out from the cards right. whereas i didn't want it to be kind of dictated to me but astrology i think was my first love when it came to this stuff yeah so now another thing that i have written down here is now that we've discussed all those methods of actually getting guidance and signs I feel like there's a big dependency on people saying, hey, I need a I need a tarot reading or I need to find out what this person or what this person that I believe in or this reader, this guide, I need to hear what the tarot is saying to me. But one thing that I feel like that's fair to say, it's a fair statement, but one thing that I, I want to bring up is that I feel, and this is nothing I can't tell you, hey, I read this somewhere or whatever, but I just feel in my mind, my heart, my intuition everywhere that we can literally get a sign from anywhere, a message from anywhere. I mean... There's times that I've been, you know, um, I think I even caught a couple of my videos and some of my interviews where, it, you know, we'll be saying something prolific and then the car honks outside and you're just like, thanks. Like, thanks for yeah. that, for that, you know, and it's almost the same thing with, I feel like people that do the tea leaves, even the, I've seen people do like, um, I don't know if they're stones or rocks and then they read that. Runes, yeah. Runes, runes, right. Yeah. Yes. And then I'm like, how does that happen? Right. So I, I logically if i'm going to use the mind that you know led me to this i'm going to say that if i literally took 
10 pieces, 10 items of anything, and I labeled them and then just threw them on the ground and said, when they fall, this is how, this is what this will mean. There's a good chance that maybe I can come out with some message if I'm finely tuned and my vibrations are high, right? Um, it's not necessary to say that spirituality has to be through tarot or any of that Absolutely. stuff. It can be through whatever it is that you make it because a lot of what this journey is, and I think this is the, the main reason of my video is, it, this is a solo journey. Like life to Absolutely. me seems like it's strictly a solo journey that we need to embrace, we need to accept, we need to learn from, we need to continually work on, right? And then even though this is a solo journey, we still got to find the balance and the duality of being all interconnected. So it's like this big infinity sign of just energy and emotions and all this great stuff that's happening. And we just got to find a balance for it. And, and that's, that's a big part. So now that we spoke about a little bit about the tarot, I want to talk about what's missing when it comes to these readings. Um, what, what misconceptions are being thrown out there? And I don't want to attack anyone that's out there. I just kind of want to put it in perspective for the people who are watching. But if you wouldn't right. mind giving me your opinion on what's missing when it comes to these tarot readings. All right. So one of the I mean, I always say this. I don't think there's any such thing as a bad tarot reader. And that's for the very same reason that you said, because it's up to the person what they get from it. Right. The message that they get, the person, the viewer, the client, what they get from the reader. So I never attack anyone. I'm all good. All tarot readers, they're all serving someone. Someone's getting something from their message. But you brought up an interesting point. You said about spirituality. Not all readers out there have a spiritual belief. That's the first thing. These are people that they are reading cards, but there's no like instructions that come with the box. Nor does that so certify you. Absolutely. But right. I mean, you can get certification for tarot. There's people that offer it. But what does that mean? Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, for example, um, when I give a message, so I'm going to pick up a card. I'm going to say this is this. It's coming from my own spiritual belief. Like there's certain questions. I think there's readers out there. They can't answer this. If you said to them, OK, do we have free will or is our future writ written? Basic question. Basic question. Because how can you interpret the future card? Are you telling the people this is absolutely going to happen? And there are some readers that say, yes, it will. But then what's free will? So you get into all these kind of rabbit holes that you go down. And that's one of the crucial things. And that's why I say know your reader, because some readers, they won't match. That's not to say you won't get a message from them, because I watch plenty of readers that they don't have the same spiritual beliefs that I have. But I think that's a very necessary thing. There are instructions that come with this, and that a lot of that is what your own belief system is and the belief system of the person that you're going to. Right. Do you agree with that? No, I agree with that. I feel like there's a lot of, um, I feel like when I watch these things, it's a lot, it's very black and white. And I have to say that um, life is not black and white. Um, Absolutely. Rather, it's, uh, the, the color is duality. <laughs> it's like, it, there's, there's good and bad happening at all times. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening. And I feel like um, when these readers tell us like, you know, make us believe like, hey, it's going to happen. I know it's coming from a good place, but, you know, you also have to understand that these people are human. Um, they're reading it on their perception. So if, if somebody who's great at reading tarot hasn't had a lot of life experiences, that's going to come out in their reading, I feel like. And it's also going to come out um, in the way they express it or explain it to you. And then that may be limited or it may be too broad in general that leaves people a little bit more confused. Now, not that I'm saying that that's wrong because I still feel like, they're doing their job. They're helping, right? I feel like the universe has put them in that, in that place to actually mm -hmm. speak up and say something. But I think it's our responsibility to understand that we always, with everything that happens in life, have to find some type of balance. So when that message is coming through, we got to say, all right, what is mine? What isn't? And how does this work for me? But not everything has to be for me. You know, we have to also remember that we all are interconnected and and, and there's a lot of messages possibly coming through. And we also got to take the bias from the reader. But um, I think it's also, it's, it's just... I'll, I'll uh -huh. talk, sorry. Okay. No, no, go ahead. I was just talking, no, no, please finish. No, 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 yeah, go ahead. I was, I was just saying that. I speak, like, I can't speak for other people. I can tell you what my, had my conflict of when, um, if you have a look at my channel, I've been posting videos for the last two years, so 2016, October 2016 I started. I started my channel five years before that. It took me five years to get it clear in my head that what am I doing? Now, mm. some people might argue that, and I had to come to that. What responsibility do, do I have? 
I have some responsibility, but the responsibility is to myself. What do I feel right in putting out there? Because I know some people argue and say, I don't have a responsibility. That's up to the person. And that's true to a certain extent. Like you, you coming to anything, it is kind of like you have your own spirituality. That's what we say. It may not resonate, you know. And I say, do not give up your power no matter what. You know, no matter what I say to you, you don't give up your power. People still do, but I've done my due diligence. That's how I see it. That, you know, that's my, I have to, um, I have to kind of like look at what, how I feel. Like, and For five years, I wasn't sure. How can I just put out messages out there? Because I know what people are like. I've been reading the tariff for other people for 22 years. Hmm. I've read for a lot of people. I know the reactions that people have. Right. And on a one to one basis, I can coach people through it. But when you're just putting out a video and there's thousands of I think one of my most views, viewed videos is 60,000. Wow. I can't coach 60,000 people through right. what the messages are. That's why I do these extra talks. They're like the instructions, like I said, that with my videos. I can't speak on anyone else's. They have their own um, instructions or, you know, kind of, um, I don't know, warnings or whatever to go with it. Yeah, but to be fair, and this is not to take away from your business, but I feel like sometimes I don't even need, even though I am going to get a personal reading with you, by the way, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like I need to search for that personal reading because I've, and this is not easy. So everything that we're talking about is not easy to be able to separate yourself from it because we're human. You know, a lot of uh, mm -hmm. what we are operate on is emotion and that's very hard to like let go of. But if you really like embrace that, you know, flowing energy and that flowing message and then you decipher it yourself, you can gather everything you need enough to piece it together and say, hey, you know, this is the message for the week and this is great. Um, but at least we're not um, depending on or we're not believing every single word that comes out. I gave you an example um, when you and I were talking um, offline one day and I was saying that um, I used to follow somebody and then I remember that she kind of mentioned like, hey. I broke up with my man and then <laughs> it was like two weeks of like a woman scorn energy coming out and I was just like, all right, this, you know, I had to stop following because that was one of those times before I ran into your channel that I was like, this sounds like you're giving yourself a reading. Like, um, and then, you know, it may not, ha a lot of times it may not be that obvious and then it may damage people down the line that are holding on to every single word that that person is coming out with. And I think that's... yeah. It's, you know, it's something that just needs to be aware, which is a lot of what this video is about. It's just, let's be aware of those things. Um, you can um, bring in the energy you need and the message you need. You can ask for it and you can't get it, but it's your job also, just like the reader's job, to, to do the due diligence and kind of just go through it and make sure what is yours, what doesn't apply. And if something doesn't apply, that's okay. You can move yep. on and wait on for another time or, or who knows, right? Yeah. Um, I've had, mm -hmm. um, like, for example, some... On it, I've had this happen on Instagram or Facebook because I post dailies on there, daily messages. And and say something difficult comes up for someone. And, you know, there's people going through difficult stuff. And they'll say, oh, my God, I was just feeling happy. What's going to happen now? And it's like, that's not your message. You're happy. You know, that's not your message then. If I was in a really great mood and someone posted a message, I'd say, like, okay, well, somebody needs to hear that. I don't. Good. I would just appreciate, be grateful that I'm in a good place, that I don't need that message. I need to just send love to the person that needs that message and off I go. It doesn't affect my day or change my day. But that's what people don't do. They kind of think, oh my God, this is happening. And you have to think, the videos are done as for Aquarius or Pisces or Aries in that order. So, so you are more than your sun sign if you believe in astrology. And that's another thing that comes mm -hmm. into this. So if I'm watching a video for Aquarius, that's my sun but say, I mean, this happened to me when I when Saturn was in Sagittarius. So I don't mean to get into the whole technical thing, but then that's going to have more dominance for me because that was a big, major life change that happened to me because of that. So it's knowing that, and I think what, it's kind of like a little bit of knowledge can be dangerous. Like we know just enough to get ourselves into trouble. I think sometimes with this stuff, and that's me included. I say that to myself with astrology. Mm -hmm. Well, you brought up a good point that I have actually listed here, and that's saying that, and I believe this wholeheartedly, that we are, are we are bigger than just one sign, or even Absolutely. or even our moon, or even our ascending. I feel like we are a little bit of everything because if we're connected, right? So if anybody out there that's watching is saying, "Hey, yeah, I believe in the fact that the universe is all about energy and us being connected," then you need to understand that we are a collective energy of everything that we've been through are made up of our ancestors whatever you want to throw in there it's like a big pot of soup 
that's just brewing there and it's not fair to say like hey i'm just a leo um it's you know it's fair to say hey sagittarius season i gotta look into what's going on with sagittarius even though maybe i don't have it in my chart but um we are yeah. made up of all these patterns all these energies all these uh, it, it's complicated, but it's not, and it's beautiful. It's very simple if you just kind of change the way you look I at think. it, right? Mm. Um, yeah. I agree with that, especially when you say that's. I think that's everything with spirituality. It's complicated because we make it complicated because we're trying to understand it. But it is, and it's also very simple. We are one. That's the oneness of it all. Mm. And like one of the things I don't allow on my channel, I don't delete many comments. You can even say my videos crap and stuff. I leave it. I don't care. That's your your opinion and it's true for you mm -hmm. so i'm big on that that's your truth that's cool but it, i don't like sign bashing so say for example you have people that are bashing like libra they'll be like libra's this libra's that and it's like when you have a seventh house in your chart seventh house is ruled by libra so you're bashing yourself and i often think <laughs> it makes me laugh because I, I think say if i was knocking leo it's like look at where leo is in my chart i bet you i've got issues going on there because i'm knocking leos or you know that's it's that's what I mean. It is simple. We just do uh, everything. Right. In that case, you can get. I get messages from all the twelve signs because I read for all twelve of them. Right. That's where I get my knowledge from and all this information from. I don't just think I oh, will screw everyone else. I'm just going to focus on Aquarius because I'm an Aquarius sign. Like that's just that. That doesn't help. Yeah. No, it doesn't. I mean, it, there's definitely seems to be like. Uh... It's like a pyramid, and ma yeah, maybe your sun sign is up here and gathering most of the attention, mm. but it's still founded by everything else, you know? So yeah. um, you got to kind of respect that and everything. Um, uh, one thing that you brought up um, is free will. And yes. I think that's another thing to bring up because I've been mulling this over, right? <laughs> mulling this over for months because I'm kind of like, where do where does free will stand, right? So my theory is, I like I said, I came from a Catholic background. I was an altar boy. And a lot of what the churches and a lot of faiths say is like, hey, God at least gave us free will, right? And you're kind of like, okay, what does that mean, right? And then once I started to venture into the spirituality realm, then you realize that free will does exist. That's why it's yeah. very hard to put my trust in a reader that's going to tell me that for the month of December, in November, that the month of December is going to be awesome for me, when honestly I have free will to not let it be awesome for me or make it awesome. I mean, it's, it just depends. Yes, we can read the energy of the um, planetary alignments and say, I'm supposed to have a great month in December because this is here. And yeah, that can be true. Mm -hmm. But if I feel like not making that happen, it's not going to happen. And that's a great example of free will which is why we need to respect that free will and find the balance also not only in the message, but in our free will. So there's like two separate yep. polarities happening and you got to find that middle balance to be able to say, hey, this is where I stand. Not here, not over here, but here. Mm -hmm. Right? But that's, that's, that's my whole thing. When I say don't give up your power, the greatest superpower you have as a human being and I believe you I believe every single human being is a sovereign being, is a divine being. Right. Whether you believe in a God, the universe, whatever this collective energy is that we tap into, the spiritual belief, whatever we have, we are a spark of that. Mm -hmm. So we are that divine essence, you know, that we are connected at all times. And your superpower as a human being is your free will. That is the, when we say don't give up your power, we're saying don't give up your free will. Right. And free will, what it is, and I'll explain, this is how, the, uh, I guess, an example, it just came to me, actually, the example that I'd give is, if you look at, say, a farmer's almanac, you know, that these are the seasons, and this is the harvest moon, and this is whatever, that's a tarot reading, that <laughs> is the astrology, that's the weather, you mm. know, it's going to be sunny today, this is the time to sow the seeds, that's what astrology and the tarot is, but if, if you, as a farmer, stay inside your house, and don't go out and sow, put the, sow the seeds. You don't go and water the crops. You don't go and get the harvest. I'm sorry, where are you getting your, harv your crops from during harvest season? Mm -hmm. And that's where people don't exercise their free will. Right, right. No, you're a thousand percent right. Um, let me go over a, a bunch of stuff. I, honestly, um, I told you this offline, but I'm going to say to the audience, I have so much to talk about that I'm just, I have like <laughs> papers and booklets of just questions and stuff. So... Some of this stuff may be all over the place, but I'm going to try to keep it as, as close together. Um, one of the things that I feel like keeps people lost, confused, looking for answers, 
when not and then not realizing the answer is within right because i think that's ultimately what we learn is that everything is just within it's always been so even when somebody's like oh i had an epiphany but like couldn't you have had that same epiphany like three months ago probably yeah it was always there it's just you weren't ready for yeah. it maybe or, or something right mm -hmm. um but one thing that i really i'm big on lately is labels labels oh, you're so, gonna get me started now <laughs> <laughs> so i just feel like um, you know, there's, there's questions and stuff asking about, um, the question becomes very, when the, when the questions or the concerns of the people looking for answers through spirituality come very specific. So when you start saying like money relationship, um, you know, you start using specific words, that's fine because that's the way of expressing what it is that you're looking for. But I think it goes even further than that because, a lot of what this is, the word money, the word um, um, relationship, uh, sex, uh, love, uh, who knows, right? They're all pretty yeah, much exactly. labels. Yeah. yeah, it's all mm -hmm. labels that we're looking for when they already exist within us. So um, we, I don't even know how to express this, but a lot of what I'm trying to say is we need to learn to get rid of those labels because then we can find the answers that we're looking for because a lot of what our answers are is fluid organic raw natural right mm -hmm. and those things you can't put a label on like you can't the same way how the energy you can't put a label on um you know when something amazing happens us as humans a lot of times we're like speechless we're like you know it could be something horrible or something awesome and we're just there like you know somebody would be beginning to be like what happened here sir and they're like just awesome yeah. stuff is happening you know but that, that's because there's no way of labeling that. There's no way of saying, putting a word that we humans use, it's, it's a feeling, it's, it's an energy, it's, it's awesomeness. So I feel like I would love to hear your thoughts on labeling, please, because I think it's a big disservice to the human race. <laughs> I talk about labels all the time and I've had like a, a I, it became a podcast, but it was just basically a place for me to give these kind of ideas. It's on my website. And one of the things I'd say at the beginning of everything is semantics. Everything comes down to the meaning that we attach to the words. So even when people throw around things like we'll just use um, twin flame or soulmate or right. this kind of stuff that people, um, they bring up. And I'm just to tell them why it, they kind of use the labels to kind of almost give some kind of extra credit to, but you don't understand this is my twin flame. And it's like, well, I don't give a shit what you call it. What does it mean to you? Right. What is the meaning? How does it make you feel? And that's what I think that's what you were saying, that that feeling that you get inside, what, what does it mean for you? I might say soulmate and think, oh God, I don't want a soulmate. You might say soulmate and think this is my life partner, right. but it means two different things. Right. To and, each of us. And the label is like explaining it for you when honestly we should be explaining mm -hmm. it for ourselves. Right? Exactly. It's, and that, that's kind of one of the problems I have with the whole kind of spiritual community as a whole is it's become dogma. You know, and it's almost like we try mm -hmm. to do this stuff to get away from religion and people telling us what to do. But, oh, no, now we're telling each other what to do. That Oh, that's a twin flame relationship and stuff. And that's that's what my problem with labels, you know, that I'm this or I'm that or I'm that no what does that mean though and you can only get that from how you feel about it what you were saying that sometimes you are speechless and i get it we need words to try we need kind of labels i guess to communicate i mean you couldn't have this conversation now you know we talk about astrology and tarot those are labels as well right but it's a conversation it's a conversation we expand on that like you're asking me well, what does that mean for you and i'm you're giving your opinion on what it means for you mm -hmm. and that's what i mean we can't get stuck on just the labels you know that i'm an oh i'm an aquarius well what the hell does that mean right we get a lot of people will say that yeah sorry go no we get trapped and lost because of that uh, you know they tell you absolutely you, you have to find success and you're like what does that word mean you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, you got to find love. What does that mean? You got to get money. What does that mean? Because, you know, I've come from a corporate world where I'm making good money and now I'm not. And I'm happy. I'm happier than I've ever been in my life. <laughs> you know, same. so it's... I I'm the same here. Same yeah, here. I found the success that way. So, but I would have, if you would have told me that, if you would have told me three years ago that my, my happiness would be like it is right now, where it's, um, you know, not rich, but just just full of happiness and peace i would have been like yeah all right i hope there's a bentley parked outside as well you know but <laughs> now yeah. it's like i can care yeah. less about that shit because i'm just like hey i'm i'm living it the way i need to live it but um a big part of that 
was getting rid of those labels in my head that made me say that I was clinically depressed, that I was stressed or anxiety ridden or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, I, I just think it's it's a big disservice and it keeps people very trapped and lost. And I hope that the people watching this can kind of like fine tune that perspective to help them out. It's, I mean, I think we talked about this last time when we had that chat as well, that um, I was saying it's words like fear. Like if I said to you, oh, I, I was feeling afraid today. Now people are going to think, oh my God, they'll say, don't be afraid. What are you afraid of? But fear, it serves us. Think about our ancestors. We would not be alive as a species today if our if our ancestors did not have that kind of fight or flight response right. to hearing noises out in the bush. If they didn't have that, but it's we've labeled everything. That's good. That's bad. That's this. That's that. And I think that has to be the first thing of spirituality is going beyond that. And that's where you get your personal meaning from it. No one likes to be afraid. But, you know, if you're walking down the street at night and you feel afraid and you listen to your fear and cross, you might stop you from getting mugged. Like, do you know what I mean? Very true. But if you're like, fear is bad, fear is bad, I'm not going to be afraid, then, you know, it's facing your fear and understanding it. And that's with any kind of label, I guess, that we put on it. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I agree. Um, I'm going to stop talking about the points that I want to talk about real quick, and I want to go to some <laughs> questions that your audience actually asked. So okay. I'll ask some of them, and then we'll go back to the other stuff, because I think a lot of mm -hmm. it is just more intertwined here. But let's start with the first one. So somebody asked if... Um, in regards to the sun, moon, and rising signs, right? Um, how do you, so they're saying, how do you discuss the best way to digest all three and develop a total picture? Um, I like this question that I'm asking right now because it goes with the labels. <laughs> yes. So it like does. I said, there's no wrong way of looking at this because one, I can look at it and say, oh, here goes another label. Or I can say, let me find out what serves me and what's going to be best because, Honestly, you can get a message from any reading, even if it's not your sign, right? Absolutely. I do every day. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I, um, and that's another thing. Like, I, I only do what I do and people don't believe me on this. I do it because it's fun. It's fun for me. Yeah. I pull the dailies every day. And I think it shows that most people know that I get excited about what I'm doing because right. it's fun for me. I get to come and play with the cards every day and I get to, and I learn so much. I yeah. People think I've sat and read books or done this. Right. I've gotten the messages by giving people their messages. Mm -hmm. I learn, you know, some of it sticks in me as well. It's like, oh yeah. And I, um, so when you're looking at your sun, moon, and we say sun, moon, rising. But I had this conversation actually, oh God, a while back on one of my, because a girl brought this up and she said, well, what do you mean sun, moon, rising? She goes, well, if we're all the signs, like she, what you said, wouldn't I get messages from all of them? I said, yeah, but can you imagine if every reader said, watch all 12 of my videos? It's just, they're going to be like, yeah, right. Every 30 you minute know? video. <laughs> yeah. They're just like, all right. Yeah. I've got six hours to sit and watch, you know, your stuff and you're just trying to get views. But that's what it is. And People will say to me, is my rising going to resonate more than my son? Only you can answer that. Right. You can only answer that yourself. Right. Like I might watch my moon and I think oh, this is not resonating at all. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I won't know that. And I might not connect to my moon. I'll be honest. I don't watch my moon videos. I watch my sun and my rising. But very rarely, unless I come to it, you know, will I get that. But I do all of them anyway. And I get messages from all of them, yeah. even though I don't have placements in some of them. Yeah. But yeah, it's your own response. Sorry, go on. Now, yeah. I'm curious to know right now why you um, watch The Rising more than The Moon. Is there a reason? I'll be honest with you. When I first started doing this, I would just watch Sun. And it was time thing. You know, I was working yeah, yeah. a lot and doing mm -hmm. whatever. And then a lot of what happened to me, I kind of drifted away. And then I came back, back in 2015 um, when Saturn hit Sagittarius. That's my rising, Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, well, a lot of the Aquarius stuff stopped resonating. You know, the stuff that I was watching or interested in. And I was like, all right, this is not resonating with me. Um, I thought, let me check out. And I, I think I came upon it by chance. It was just there. And it was word for word what was happening. And I thought, okay, so this. I sometimes do. Sometimes I will go and check out my moon. But my go-to will, um, like now Jupiter's in Sagittarius. So I'm sure I'm going to start resonating with my rising a lot more as well but it depends it really does depend some readers and you have to think they are connecting with a vibration that's how i see it mm -hmm. and maybe one reader is more in tune with my rising messages coming through that because they're just the avenues that they come through to you right yep 100%. i might be sat with you like say, say i was hanging out with you and you're like oh i'm just gonna watch my leo video and i'm like all right put it on yeah you know and it might resonate with me and yeah. i'll be like oh my god you know that's happening with me yeah 
And then maybe you'll look and you're like, oh, shit, I got Leo over here. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, that exactly, makes sense. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on reading tarot for yourself, to yourself? Or do you, is that advised? Do you do that? What's the, what's the label on that? <laughs> <laughs> all right so you mean it, reading the tarot for yourself like say if i was doing a reading for myself yeah so let's say somebody out there does is learning tarot and they're like oh, i'm just gonna do it for myself um how okay. does that work i this is how i advise people when you're first learning to do the tarot i i advise you to do it because you know your story you know what the energies are so when you're able to connect it to oh my god this is going this is what's going on but not predictive like what is happening right now so you're going to understand the flavor of that card more because you understand what's going on with you. Then you experiment with your friends and family, but you let them know. I'm not, I'm just kind of like trying to, because you know what's going on with them. I used to, with my housemates, I used to practice with my housemates because mm -hmm. I knew what was going on in their lives. So that's how I learned. But it gets to a point and I get readings, you know, I've got readers that I go to when, and that's because sometimes we get too close to our own story. And that's the problem sometimes because we will start trying to make the pieces fit to what we, you know, it's okay when you're first starting out, but if you have a real issue, I always advise people, I mean, I go to this and I've been reading the tarot for the longest time, like, do you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. but I will go just cause I want a diff, I want a fresh perspective, maybe like a fresh view. I mean, if it could be with anything. If I was working on a project, maybe I was working on a project and, you know, making something, a castle or something, and it's not working. I might call you in and say, hun, can you tell me what I'm doing wrong here? Something doesn't look right here. And your fresh perspective, your fresh eyes might be like, well, no, that window looks a bit funny. You might want to do that. Right. Do you see what I mean? Right. So that sometimes I think we need that fresh perspective. But I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But you're not going to see it as clearly as what someone else is going to because they're detached. They don't have a vested interest in what's going on. They're just going to tell you the story, how they see it. Yeah. Now, you said a, a key word there that I, I, I don't think I've brought up yet, which is predicting. Um, yeah. My theory with that. Um, just like, like you said, we've probably gone through, I, I've, I feel like I've been studying my butt off for the last like year since I've discovered all of this stuff and I'm kind of just like making sure what's right, what's wrong, um, mm. and, and what's going on with that. But I think a couple of things that I got into including, and I have to say remote viewing, which I think it's something that, um, a lot of people that go into this kind of go into that too. Um, but a, a lot of what I learned from there and other things, including astrology and tarot, is that I feel like because of free will, there's no way to predict anything. Can we go back and maybe figure things out that happened? Yeah, I think so, because there seems to be timestamps in the universe that happen. But I feel like there's no way to say, yeah, that'll happen in the future because we're just using a cookie cutter layout. We don't really the filling is all different. You know, it's, it's, it's all very different and I feel yeah. like it's very hard. And I think that's important to mention also because a lot of people look for not what happened, not what's going on, but what's going to happen. Because whatever's happening right now, hopefully it'll go away because this is going to happen later. And you realize that if you're not fixing what's happening here and what has happened before, then none of this is going to make sense over here in the, in the future. Right. But that's from fear because if people don't trust themselves. I mean, the tagline on my channel, the tagline that I use everywhere is the best way to predict the future is to create it. Like, that's I make right. It clear. I love that you say that. <laughs> I say that, but that's my tagline for my channel. So when people come up to me and they say something like, will this happen? And I'm think I, I've said this clearly on my channel that why would you come to me as a reader and ask me, will I make it happen? We can look at your energies. I often say this, do not ask a tarot reading something that you would not ask Google Maps. You would not ask Google Maps, will this come up? You have to tell Google Maps, I want to go here. How do mm -hmm. I get here? Good so point. you have to say how. You don't say will. Mm -hmm. Google Maps can't tell you that and neither can a tarot reading. It can give you one option, but that's up to you then. That's your free will. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. That's a, that's a great point. Actually, that's a great way of looking at things. Um, another question that I see here is... Whether you believe in karmic relationships, twin flames, soulmates, and how do they apply to our lives? Um, also, maybe we can talk a little bit about relationships, marriage, divorce, sex. Um, how does... I said earlier that this is a very solo journey. I don't care what anyone says because even when you're born, you're alone. And then when you die, you're mm -hmm. alone. You know, you're the, you're, you're the only one there when you're taking the last breath, right? Um, so I feel like this is... Um, yeah. That's very important to just understand because 
um, as a society, we look for answers on everyone else and we blame everyone else and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of it in the end is just us. So that being said, in regards to all these things that I just said in the questions, what are your thoughts in regards to actually having a relationship with someone else? Okay, so my, I've, I say this all, all the time and everyone who watches my channel, they know this, I say this. I treat everyone in my life as a soulmate. Mm. And I think when we start doing this thing, like you're a karmic, you're a soulmate, but you're a twin flame. What does that mean? <laughs> We've made this hierarchy. We've made this hierarchy of some people are more, you know, they, they're more important in my life. They're not. Every single person, and that's what my idea of a soulmate, and people don't have to agree with me. That's my journey, what my experiences have shown me, and it's my belief system. And people can disregard it. That's cool. That's free will. And I encourage people to do that. But my idea of a soulmate is someone who brings us home to ourselves. And in that situation, everyone does, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're holding up a mirror to me. Say you say something, whatever you say, a mirror doesn't become you. When right. you look in a mirror, you're having a great day. You think, wow, my hair looks great today, right? Another time you look in the mirror, you're tired. You've had a shit day at work. And it's like, oh, my God, the bags under my eyes, I look like crap. And yet the mirror doesn't become you. You're seeing in that mirror where you are. And it's the same mirror where that you saw when you were good, too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so that's the same with relationships. Every single person, they are mirroring something back to us. Now, that's a very general statement because there's some very shitty people out there. And then we get into the whole other stuff of like... You know, then why did I meet this person and why did they do this to me? Like some really nasty stuff's happened to people. So I want to make it clear that we're talking very generally, very overly simplified. And I've dealt with some people that have gone through some really nasty stuff. And that would be a personal thing that people would explore. So as usual, this is a general statement across the board, especially in a conversation like this. It's very difficult to get in depth right. on certain stuff. Um, but as a general rule, yes, everyone's a mirror. So if you said something right now, you know, the whole triggered thing, I'm triggered. Mm -hmm. Why are you triggered? That person's doing whatever they're doing. It's not that you can't change the trigger. You're just being you. Right. I have to see why it affected me. Mm -hmm. Something about what you did. It's like you poured salt on a wound I already had. Mm -hmm. And yet I blame you for the wound. Right, right. So that's what I believe. And in that sense, we are all alone because you are never going to. You can't experience life as me. You don't know what I see, how I feel. You're only ever going to experience life as yourself as yourself that's all there will ever be and in that sense yes it's a very and it's that whole thing that you were saying that you know it's that uniqueness and that soloness and the connectedness right we're all here kind of together i see it as a big machine we're all this big machine and the machine only works because of each and every single one of us and yet it's our job we're that little cog it's to make sure that we're polished we're running okay because the whole machine the whole society stops so it's not selfish to take care of yourself, your own needs, to understand yourself. You help the collective by focusing on yourself. But it's you are unique. It's not selfish, it's important. It, oh my God, I wish more people did it. You wouldn't look to someone else. A lot of people, I mean, uh, another example I give, a, so in terms of relationships, it, I'm happy myself, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm very happy, I... I make sure I take care of my own needs. Like when I'm lonely, I'll go hang out with a friend. You know, when I'm bored, I'm going to go watch. I, I take care of all this stuff. I have a job that I love to do. Mm -hmm. So I incorporate love. Now, what that means is I'm not starving. A lot of people are starving for these kinds of things. They don't providing for themselves. So growing your own crops, right? Growing your own food. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. Those emotional needs. So imagine if in a town, everyone grew their own crops. Now, that sounds very lonely to some people. But right now, we're all out with our begging bowls saying, give me food to people that don't have food themselves. Right. So and that's why we're so nasty to each other in relationships, because we want stuff. And imagine if we all grew our own crops, we were all happy emotionally. We had our own emotions, took care of them. We could have a banquet. We just enjoy each other. We'd just be partying with each other. Right. Because I don't need your food, but I get to come and taste some of what you've got to offer. And it's like, oh, my God, you've got that. Well, check out what I've got. And that's how I see relationships. That's a beautiful example because it, it seems like when we're looking for others, when we aren't full ourselves, we're all eating from an empty bowl. It's like... Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then... That's the... I mean, and the other thing is, and I've, I gave this example. It was the last actually podcast that I recorded and I gave this example. A lot of people have a very simplistic idea or a very unique idea of what food looks like. So what most people do in love is, say, for example, I don't know, um, a pizza. That's what I think. A food is only pizza. 
So I've got a whole table in front of me full of food, but I don't see pizza on there. So I'm like, I'm starving, I'm starving. And it's like, pick anything up. You know, the friend, the teacher, the the child, the pet, these are all love. This You're going to get love from all of this. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, I can't eat unless there's pizza there. Pizza is the only food that I have. Right. And so people are starving mm-hmm. because they don't even recognize what the food is. Right. No, that's a great point. That's awesome. <laughs> See, this is a speech this moment. I'm like, uh. <laughs> like, that makes so much sense. No, that's awesome. I'm so happy you said that because that's a great example and a great way of putting it. And a lot of people don't see that. And it's important to see mm-hmm. that. Let me move on to the next question. Um, do you think we go through shit or mud in order to ascend? Do you think it happens to all of us? And can we accomplish spiritual change and ascension without going um, through all that type of crap? Or do we need to? Okay. I, I know I get asked this a lot because I took, I was very ill for seven years. I spent seven years in a bed. So, I, I mean, that was my darkest time in my life, I would say, that period. And, and I know a lot of people would ask me those kinds of questions because I did go through it. Um, I, wanna, I will say this to start off with that. Think about it. When you're warm, when you're comfortable, you know, for, you're sitting in a room, you're warm, com- temperature's fine, light's fine. Would you move? No, you're just going to sit there. You're not going to change a thing, right? So when, why would you grow? Why would you change anything? So only when it starts to get d- darker in the room, then you're going to go look for a light. So only when it starts to get cold, are you going to go look for a jacket or put the heat on? So I think the fact that we see it as crap or shit, mm-hmm. that's one of the problems. That's the, the yes. labels thing that comes in again. That, you know, um, I, I was ill. So I got very ill. Corporate life, I was social. I used to party all night. I used to go out with my friends all night. I'd work all day. I worked hard. I played hard. I had this life. And then it went shit. I got very ill. And so... I went through years and that's what I mean. Like it's always there inside of us. Nothing came to me from outside. It's what you were saying earlier. And it was horrible. Why is this happening to me? And it's a whole process that we go through. And I could go on for hours about that, but that's for another time that talk. But it got to the point, like people ask me when I came into my power, understanding my own power, my own free will. And it happened when I was lying in a bed, I did not have any use of my body. I couldn't use it. It was pain. I could barely walk. It used to be struggle to get up and just go to the toilet or whatever. You know, that was the problem. And that's when I came into my power. And somebody could say that was shit because I realized this. What if this is the only life I have? I had to accept that. What if only life that I have? And it's like, well, this is still my life. This is still my life. And I realized my power, I could choose how to experience that. Mm Mm-hmm. And so instead of seeing it as me being the victim, that I'm being victimized by this, I was like, okay, let's call, let's call it what it is. This is what it is. This is how life is now. I'm going to live it like this. And so I'd listen to music. I'd dance in my head. You know, I chose, I don't want to feel like shit. With, I'd honor my pain, take my meds, you know, do what I needed to for myself. But it was like, all right, that's how it is. But I can still experience life. And what is experience? It's the emotion, right? What's going to make me feel good now? I can't go out and party. I can watch a movie. I can talk to a friend if I can. I can get a cushion. Some days it was just getting a different cushion just to kind of ease the pain a little bit. Mm-hmm. But it's those kinds of choices. I think um, it's, again, the labels thing. We want to see we see it a certain way. We see it. So I don't know if I've gone totally off topic there. No, but no, yeah, no, no. You're making sense because a lot, say, of, yeah. a lot of what's missing is uh, the fluid thought and accept- acceptance of what all these feelings emotions messages energies um just what all this stuff is i have a couple of bullet points and i'm just gonna read them out because like i said i had so much to <laughs> to talk about but in regards to this sure. in regards to this question i wrote four bullet points and i'm just gonna read them off i might add a little to them but i'm just gonna read them off and mm-hmm. then i want to hear what you have to say one of the bullet points in regards to this question about having to go through all this crap to actually ascend and change um one one thing that i need to um say my first bullet point is step step into your pain and embrace it because i think a lot of what happens is and i have i have friends and family that are like 20 30 years of being in the shitter or like just down on luck 
you know, and all that stuff. And it's like, oh, my God, like, if you would just understand that this shit is happening to you so that way you can learn from it and maybe accept it or something's not right. Because I don't care what religion you are, what you believe in. If something is happening logically over and over and over again, it's because something's not being corrected or handled or, you know, look, being looked at, reviewed or whatever it is. I feel like that's important. Let me move on to the next one, which is also be grateful for the good and bad. This is something that I've been learning lately. When something bad happens to me, I actually accept it. You know, it's not like um, I look at it like, oh, crap. Like, no. And I feel like ever since I've been doing that, th- life has been a lot easier for me, a lot better for me because duality is real. It is real and it is super real because if you can appreciate that good time, you have to appreciate that bad time. You have to. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's part of being grateful for all of it. Um, two more points. One, the third one is we are here to teach ourselves and not find validation because I feel like a big part of what we're doing here is trying to look for validation from others when we're going through these shitty times so that way we can continue to go through these shitty times over and over again when it's one of those mm-hmm. things where it's like, no, I don't care what anyone tells you. You have to figure out what's going on with you and you have to validate it for yourself so that way you can change, not by having anyone else tell you any different because all that does is put you into like a, a sinkhole of crap of let me figure this out when honestly the answer is just within yourself of embracing mm-hmm. all of this, embracing all of this. And lastly, um, um, yeah, th- lastly is that we're here to teach ourselves, not anyone else. We're not here to, to come here and save everyone I think we're here, like you said, you haven't read, you're not like a scholar of this stuff in the, in the terms of like you went to Harvard, but you know, you're, you're, um, you're a student of life and then now that has brought you to the point where now you're teaching about life and I think that's very important um, and it goes with a lot of what we, this question was about going through shit. I feel like if you accept the crap that's happening, you put work towards it, the universe will reward you by not giving it to you over and over again. Yeah. Your thoughts? Um, I'm gonna want you. I'm gonna want you to go through the first three again. But um, let me answer that last one sure. first. One of the things I learned, and this is how you know, going through the crap, and I don't want to call it that because at the time when I was ill. So if anyone's watching this and they're ill, I get it. You know, if you feel complete shit, I get it. I was like that. If so, if I if like future me now me had come gone back and said, hey, this is gonna be the greatest gift you've. I would have killed. I would have knocked me out and said. Fuck you. You don't know what I'm <laughs> going through. Face. You don't know the pain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who the hell are you to tell me? Uh-huh. You know, and that's one thing. No one can tell you. You go through your pain the way you need to go through it. Wherever you are, I would say, wherever you are, is exactly where you need to be. Right. You, if you're feeling like, you're feeling pain, you're feeling crap, you're feeling all of that. And one of the things I learned, I was, I was very, I was so ill. I tried everything because it's that whole push-pull thing, right? that I reject this. This is not what I want. I'm rejecting this. I'm going to hold on to the old me, the healthy me. That's the one I want. I'm pushing this away. And I felt so alone. I tried everything. And I was in my darkest place, darkest place. And I started hearing other people's stories that were going through illness. Mm -hmm. And so I've always brought that. A lot of what I do, I've brought from my time dealing, like talking to people with chronic illnesses, that community, which is sharing a story. That's all I do. I share my story. It may resonate with yours. It may not. You know, and even in the not resonating with my story, hopefully you'll find out something about your story. But this is even if I was a Harvard scholar, who's to say that I'm any kind of expert on your life? I'm not. Right. Even if I'm an expert on what exactly Mm -hmm. that's you are the expert on you. Mm -hmm. You are the expert on you, you know, and we can get and it's all input, right? Something you say is going to give me. Oh, oh, my God. I never thought about that for me. Like, but, but you're telling me about yourself. Right. You're not dictating. That's your truth. That's another thing that I tell people. Understand that somebody else's truth doesn't have to be your truth. But everything helps you to discover your own truth because you have a reaction to it. Your reaction is key. The reaction is always the message. Is it a disservice? Yeah, what? Uh-huh, I'm sorry. Is it a disservice? Um, I feel like it's been a disservice. Something that is like a theory of mine. It's a disservice to think that you're the only one going through that also. Right. Yes. I mean, and I did that when I was it didn't it sounds so obvious now. Right. But when I was and I'd been ill 
I had three years of testing and all this kind of stuff, medical stuff. And then I, they gave me the, the diagnosis and you're not going to get better and you're probably going to get. And I was like, screw this. I'm going to go because that was me. Right. Soldier on. I'm going to go find a way to do this. And I tried all these things. And I remember I left the country. Um, fine. You know, I'm going to go try all these th tr uh, treatments. I went to India, stayed there for four months, tried all these different treatments. I came back in a wheelchair and um, I went a walking stick. So all I did was make myself even more ill. So mm. I was destroyed at that point. And it was only then that it occurred to me that there must be other people that are going through this. Mm -hmm. And there are other people going through it. Mm -hmm. And and just because, say, I was feeling like crap and you were, say you had the same illness as me and you were happy. And at first it was. And some people do that. They're, they're like, how can you be happy? They take it uh, like they judged. Right. But how that I, I've been through that and I felt like. How can they be happy? Like I was cursing myself that how can I not be happy this person is? But you might have just sat with it longer, you know, because by the after a few years, I was OK with it. I could talk about it. But at first it was painful. You know, we're all at different stages of our truth as well. Even when we're having the same experience, we're not the same people. Right. And, and we can't see um, one of the questions I was here was saying, can we go through spiritual change without going through all the crap? Right. Quote unquote, the label crap. Right. But um, I want to say my opinion on that is that there's duality. And because there's duality, we are destined to have both good and bad, quote unquote, right? Good and bad. It's, but I but if you, uh -huh. go ahead. No. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. no. I was, I was going to say with duality, I always say it's two sides of the same coin. So if you've got one, you've got the other side of the flip, the coin. Right. If it's good, there's, there's bad, right? Just on the other side of that coin is bad. You, the two exist together. Everything is a blessing or a curse. Everything. Every, and it depends on the person. And if you think of, I always say, think of everything as fire. The e like energy, a situation, it's fire, right? What's the blessing of fire? You can cook with it. You can stay warm with it. What's the curse of fire? It's going to burn the house down or you could set fire to someone with it. And yet fire isn't good or bad. Right. It's exactly. how we use it. Great how example. We use it. Great example. Great example. Another thing that I want to bring up that I wrote here was that pain creates energy, which creates momentum. Your thoughts on that? <laughs> okay, so I kind of I view pain. So a lot. Of, I, I'll just say this to you: when people say to me, "I don't get overly excited about things," even though I'm always like very high energy, and I don't get really down about things either. I'm usually in the middle of the road. And why is that? Because I've got this thing that I don't push. I don't push anything away. So even if it's pain, I my thing is not, most people do this. Oh my God, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Mine is, all right, why is this hurting me? That's mm -hmm. what I will do. I will sit with it. But then if something feels great, I do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I think, okay, well, why is this, this feel great for me? You know, it's about, we are not what we feel. That's that's what I think people you have a feeling about how you feel. It's a double dialogue going on. So when you say when pain happens, yes, it creates momentum because it's like when you put your hand in fire, you've got to go, oh, my God, I don't want to burn my hand like you pull it out. But it's the push pull. And I think we can have a drastic reaction to it, but it's about understanding, slowing it down a little bit, you know. Um, but yeah, any emotion, even like feeling great, we, we pull it. Think about that. You pull it closer, right? If you're okay. cold, you're going to pull that warmth to you. Mm -hmm. But it's about why do you need it? That's the question. And why do you need it? Why do you want to get away from the pain? Why do you want to pull that closer? And people say, isn't that obvious? Isn't it obvious? No one wants to feel pain. Okay, but why is it painful? Right. Why is it painful? And it's there for why a reason. Why did it burn in the first place? Yes, exactly. Everything. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, no. And, you, and, and everything you're saying, it has to do with just balance. It's finding a balance. Another mm -hmm. thing that you said that you do, which is you embrace that pain and the good and the bad, but that's also living in the moment. Yes. Right? Which is also important because a lot of people, great stuff happens and they're like, woo, I hope this lasts forever. But then when pain comes around, they're like, I don't want to look at it. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to. And it's like, mm, you got to have both. You got to do both in order to, to actually encounter change and inspiration but like it's that happiness everyone wants to be happy all the time and that's not our fault that's culture you right. know the whole school of positive thinking we've been taught be happy be happy ha be happy and they mostly it's so they can sell our shit that's going to make us happy like that's where it kind of comes from but why do you want to be happy all the time why do you want to be happy all the time that's like wanting to live on chocolate all the time like chocolate's great but you'd get sick of it you know happiness think about it if something great happens to you, it's because you're usually middle of the line, right? You're kind of cruising along and it's like, wow, this is amazing. 
Now, if that was, that would become, if everything that makes you happy now, if you got everything and it's happened to me, trust me, I've gotten everything that I wanted. You're just, that becomes your new normal. That's the way we are. Then we want, happy is not enough then. Then I want ecstasy. I want more than that. So how far are you going to keep going? You might as well just embrace whatever you're feeling now. Enjoy whatever's coming in for what it is. No, I agree. I agree. Um, let me move on to a couple of questions. I still got a whole bunch. <laughs> Sorry, hon. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm honored. I could be here all night. Um, um, someone asked it, or someone asked a couple of questions. A lot of them, I just kind of molded them to kind of include the questions that I already had, which might have been similar. Mm-hmm. But is this a Renaissance era? Do you feel there's a change being projected through art during this time? Okay. Well, um, that's interesting that someone says that because there's a few astrologers that I follow. And uh, one of them is the Leo King. And mm-hmm. he's talked about this. He's talked about the, the planets, that the last time this happened, the kind of planetary transits with everything that's going on in Capricorn. And I won't bore people that are not into the astrology, but that it happened during the Renaissance. Right. That the, the last time there was a surge for this uh, around this. Um, for me personally, I do feel... I think the value of the human, a lot of astrologers have been talking about this and it re- it personally resonates with me is, um, and it's to do with Uran- Uranus or Uranus. Some people get offended when I say Uranus <laughs> because of the anus in that. But um, yeah, that's, it's the ruler of Aquarius and that's the rebel energy. You know, let's do things different. Let's kind of shake things up. It's in Taurus and Taurus is the human being. Mm-hmm. And so I think the value of humans is changing and think about it. When we create music, art, whatever, that is unique to you. You and me could, we could both be in front of a landscape, watercolors in front of us. We're going to come out with something different, right? You and me, mm-hmm. we're going to express it differently. You're going to come out with your style. I'm going to come out with mine. And I think there is going to be, I do believe there's a bigger value on what you can offer as a human being, like your opinions. Actually, I've seen it happening with writing. I used to be a uh, write online, like a freelance writer. Mm-hmm. And it kind of went from this school of, how you're supposed to write think about it if you think 10 20 years ago you know the writing used to be very scripted almost there was a style of writing now it's about what's your individual voice blogging came into being Mm -hmm. do you see what i mean so it is about the individual and i think as we move that's the age of aquarius right aquarius is like fly your freak flag be who the hell you are and accept everyone else they are and i think that is it will become more and more i hope it does i'm like that i love that yeah, no, I, I mean, I haven't been able to get too much into it, but definitely um, hear a lot about how um, the age of Aquarius and all these awesomeness that's just happening with expression art. I mean, it's I mean, I can see it. I mean, that's a lot of what I'm doing on my channel is because of that, because I'm like, where is this coming from? Like, oh, and then a lot of it's also like piecing it together. And you're like, whoa, this is pretty awesome. What's going on behind the scenes with all this energy? Um, <laughs> let me move on to um, someone asks, how do I find my life path and purpose and before you answer i got a couple of things going on here in regards to that question because one i want to go back to the fact that um life path and purpose to me have the the word life path and purpose served me in the wrong way because it was a label that i was looking for and kind of going what's my purpose what's my purpose i did a video on tarot um which i'll probably have the link below a couple of months ago and we kind of got into the more of the energy. That's when I was just getting into it and I wanted to learn more and discuss more about the energy. But I think um, one of the conclusions that I did on that interview, which was big, was saying that your life path and purpose is strictly to just be happy and make it work for yourself. You know, like find your self-fulfillment, find what makes it work for you. Not See, if you haven't found that life path or purpose, it's because you might be living it for someone else. You might be actually too stuck in that label. You might be looking, and it's not that. It's it's literally as simple as today I'm going to make sure that I'm taken care of in these ways, right? So not only because I took a shower I'm eating, but also is my mind right? Is my heart right? Is my gut right? Is all that stuff going on right? And then once you start doing that little by little slowly, right, on a consistent basis, the universe will reward you for that work that you're putting in by giving you and showing you in clear bulging letters, like here's your purpose and here's your path. Um, But that's, once again, it's a solo journey that has to be made. No one, not one person can tell you what your life path or purpose is. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Agreed, agreed. I always say that I have a simple thing. And just remember this. You will know if you are on your life path if you do what you love and you love what you do. Simple. Yeah. In any given moment. 
if and people think that's too simplest simplistic i've got bills to pay you don't know what well, i've you had bills to pay you come from the corporate biz like you know that i had bills to pay that's just it that's where your faith comes in Mm-hmm. If it, you know, if I do what I love, trust me, you generate such a great vibration, and it shows in the work that you do. You will be successful. You will make your way in the world. But you have to do love what you do. Now, I get it. You know, sometimes you have to do jobs that you do have bills to pay. We've got, we need to buy food, right? We've got clothes that we need to wear and stuff. Then you must find what you can love in that. Find what you can love in what you do. That's that's how you find. That's the simple answer. Mm-hmm. To, if you're not happy doing what you're doing this is not my life path. It's because you're not loving what you're doing, you know? And it doesn't matter, like, say to my, it's happened with this. I love what I do, right? But I think it was earlier this year, I went through like a crisis of faith. And I love those, by the way. I don't think they're a bad thing. I think it's great. And I I wrote a post about this on Instagram where you can, if you don't question what you do, if it can't hold up to that kind of questioning, then don't do it. Mm-hmm. You must be able to question what you're doing. That am I on the right path? Am I doing the right thing? And you come back even more committed when you can answer those questions and think, no, this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And I've said this: that if I tomorrow just if this becomes a job for me, a chore, like just a way to pay the bills, I'm out. Right. I'm out. Mm-hmm. My channel will go. You won't see any more readings from me. I'm just out. Mm-hmm. I don't want to. It has to be fun. It has to be. I have to get up and think. Oh, I get to go play. Mm-hmm. And that's something I was never, I'm a control freak. You know, I used to be this control freak that everything has to be a certain way mm-hmm. and I need to earn a certain amount of money and all of this kind of stuff. And now it's like, it just has to be fun. If it's not fun, if I'm not having a laugh and enjoying it, then what's the point? Mm-hmm. Who's seen tomorrow, right? right? You have to be happy in the mo- in the now. Yeah. No, I agree. And that, that's kind of how it happened for me. I literally spent a lot of time trying to figure out my purposes and then, I just simplified my life. I literally started taking things that were like mundane and doing wrong for me. And just even if it wasn't, oh, my job, I couldn't quit right away. But, you know, I made it in a way that it worked for me until I quit. And then I started doing everything that I wanted to do. And then the universe just kind of rewards you with, here you go. Like whatever it is that you needed, here it is. And and, and like everything we've talked about, um, embracing the pain, embracing the change, the duality, the, finding balance. All of that stuff just kind of led me to this life path of, hey, um, you said, you know, you want to wake up and have fun. But the way I look at it even more, because I feel like fun is another label, but it's like I want to be able to wake up and be. I want to be. Whatever it is that that is for myself, I want to be. I don't want to get up and be like, I'm being something else because I'm walking to the train station and I got to go do this and I'm just miserable for the rest of the day. And then by the, by the end of the day, I'm tired and exhausted and I don't have time for myself. Now that I've discovered all this stuff, I literally am doing 40 times of what I used to do back in corporate America. And I still have so much energy left <laughs> and so much. Yeah. The same with me. Yeah, yeah. I think I worked double the hours that I worked yeah. when I had an actual paying job because yeah. I worked for myself. But one of the things that, especially with fun, one of the things I'm very quick to kind of add to that when people say about fun, that people think fun is like not working. Right. Working is fun for me. A right. challenge is fun for me. Mm-hmm. When something frightens me, I don't get that. I don't want this. I'm like, ooh, something frightens me. Like that gets me excited. Mm-hmm. So there's the things that I find fun. Like people will think it's like partying or doing whatever. That's not it. Right. I find everything fun. It's a challenge. Anything that gets me going. It's I don't want to be bored. I don't want to just sit there. I don't want an easy life, you know. But that that's not fun for me. That's my own idea of what fun is. I want a challenge. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you know I got triggered it, uh, just this earlier this week, and I hadn't got triggered in ages. And when I get triggered, it's like, oh, my God, I get to go down a rabbit hole. This is so much fun, like, to go and have a look at what hurt me. And, you know, so to, fun can be a little bit of a weird word to use. You're right. It is a label. But I find things fun that maybe other people wouldn't, right? Yeah. No, I'm going through the same thing now. I, this retrograde was the first time that I actually was like, all right, let me look at these problems that are just popping out of nowhere and, and, and like, have yeah. Have fun with them. Let's be. Let's see what happens, where this takes us. And I feel like it's been... Yes, exactly. Like, exactly. I can't... You know, and now I'm like, oh, man, that's great. Because I never looked at it like that. It was always, like, negative, positive, negative. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, we can find that middle. Yeah, it's like a push. Like, you push it away. I don't want this. I don't want this. Mm-hmm. Um, another question is, um, they want to discuss numbers, patterns, numerology, vibrations. What does it all mean, in your opinion? Can you... 
it says poor network connection, so I hope you sure, can, sure. can still hear me. I okay, can, I can hear you. Can um, you see me though? Yeah, I can. But uh, sorry, what were you saying? The okay. numbers. So somebody wanted to discuss numbers, patterns, mm -hmm. vibrations, numerology, seeing eleven, eleven, and three, three, threes, like all that stuff. What What is your uh, your your take on that? It has immense meaning if it means something to you. Right. Because you're the one that sees it. Right. You know, 11, if there's 11, 11 every day or two times a day, depending on how your clocks are, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have the same meaning for everyone. If you've seen it, you've noticed it and it stands out to you, then it has meaning for you. Um, and that's not to put down. There's loads of websites out there on where you can go check up. And people do check out the numerology and the number means this. And we do it in tarot. Fours mean this, fives mean this, whatever. But I don't know. Say your dad's your dad you were thinking of your dad right and his birthday was on the fifth or something and you see five five and that you might take that as oh my god my dad's talking to me but whereas somebody else might say oh fives are transformation fives are change no right. it's what it means to you what does it mean to you that's the most you get like you said the answers within you we have every answer we're born with everything mm -hmm. there is a manual we are the manual that comes with this life mm -hmm. but we just ignore it and we look outside for answers right Right. Um, somebody wrote, um, how do we read energy and protect our own energy? Okay. Yeah. That's one of the things I get. Cause whenever I, I will talk about anything and even like if something negative comes up, that's, it's the same as something positive, you know, I don't care. And if I might say that, oh, there's people doing this and I'll get comments saying, don't give your energy to negative people. I'm not giving my energy. I'm not giving my energy. And I think if we don't, we should be able to discuss everything from a neutral place, right? Mm -hmm. So we give our energy. I don't think we can, I don't think we give or receive energy. And I know Reiki people are going to go into this. That's a totally different thing. <laughs> but um, I'm talking about it, what they mean by energy. And it's again, it's the labels, like, right? It's the power. Mm -hmm. It's the power thing. If I'm, if say you did something to me. And I'm raging and I'm like, why did he say that to me? Why did he do this to me? I can't eat my food. I can't do any work. That's it. I've let you, I've let you affect me. Mm -hmm. I've let you affect me. That's not to say you shouldn't, you can't piss me off. Mm -hmm. If you piss me off, there's a reason. But then it's for me to go look at that and think, okay, he said this. Why has it annoyed me? It's how you use it. Right. But people are very big on like energy vampires. And every time I use, the or uh, I, I use Oracle decks, vampire Oracle decks. And people say that to me. That, that's negative energy vampires you've never met a real vampire they're psychic and it's like don't why would you think that for me i don't think anyone can do anything to me you know I, no well. one can take my energy no one can give me energy that's me mm -hmm. you know why that's giving your power away fuck your energy that's giving your power away i'm sorry if i'm swearing in your no <laughs> I, I i like to swear to so i'm sorry <laughs> oh okay <laughs> um yeah no it's um it's what we said where um the labels right like people are, are saying a vampire you never met a vampire or energy energy you know it's like it, there's, no, there's no real answer there's just it's a flow it's a thing it's a feeling it's it's just the way things are um you kind of got to find that for yourself because not everyone reads energies or protects energies or display energies or whatever it is that you want to call it um the same way it's all based on i guess your your own your own way it's of fire right that's yeah. what I was saying about the fire before. It's like fire. You can cook with it. Like mm -hmm. you might come. I had. I was sat. I remember with my sister once. I was in a really good mood, and she won't mind me saying this. She's gonna watch this actually. Hi Nick. She'll be watching this afterwards. But um, yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, she was like really upset, and she, you know when people are really upset, they don't want to be around other people. And I was like, hey, come on, just talk to me. And she's like, I don't want to bring your mood down and and stuff. And it's like you can't affect my mood. Right. It's okay. You just have a breakdown and you just do whatever it's fine and she did and she, it was if she'd sat by herself she might have been upset or weak but she cried it out in 10 minutes she was fine and then i think we went and watched the movie together like you know it's fine like it's it's not a problem that i think we have this thing of oh my god your negative energy it's like why is your energy so easily affected by what someone else is going on with someone else that's the point there no yeah. one's doing anything to you they're not affecting you with their energy you are there's something in you is attaching to that because you've got it in you and you find this a lot with positive thinkers fake positive thinkers is what i call them they put on this <laughs> mask of everything's great i'm positive kumbaya namaste everything's great right they do all this and you bring up anything negative and then they're like you know saging the shit out of the place like mm -hmm. you know smudging it and stuff to clear the energy and it's like 
why is that negative? You could, I talk to people all day, very difficult thing. I'm very blessed, you know, that people trust me with some very dark stuff. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect me. And that's not because I don't care. It's because that's my job. I think if they're brave enough to look in those shadows, in those dark places, then who am I to be affected by it? That's their story. That's their truth. That's where your people don't have good boundaries themselves. That's what it is. You have great boundaries. You can go anywhere, speak to anyone. It won't affect you. It won't affect you. Yeah, that's something that I've been learning for the last two months where I'm like, holy shit. When people used to come to me, I used to be like, oh, I don't want to deal with this person. Or I hope I don't run into this person because this. And then you're like, I should be able to tackle anything that hits me if I'm zen with myself. Like, And, and, and I've been doing it. And it's been it was difficult. But now more than ever, I'm like wow where was this the whole time oh yeah it was in me yeah. i just didn't find it yeah <laughs> i will say this though there are some people like the whole thing is that doesn't mean that you have everyone in your life i mean say you want us oh i was with someone and they were really toxic and by that i mean they did stuff that i did not think was cool like they were racist or they were homophobic or that kind of shit i don't want to be around someone like that right. why that's different that's not me giving my energy that's like you are not in tune with me you bore me it's not fun it's not interesting you don't speak my truth at all your truth i don't understand it so why would we be in each other's space so it's discerning right. you discern yourself but if your friend's having a bad day that's not toxic why are you going to ignore your friend like do you know what i mean you right. love that person you might not love them in that moment but even ourselves we do it to ourselves imagine when you're upset most of us hate ourselves when we're upset right we hate ourselves mm -hmm. and it's like that's when we need to love ourselves even more love yourself through it mm -hmm. yeah no I, I agree um there's these two questions but i feel like they go together because i want to kind of give my insight on it um and then i'll mm -hmm. i'll let you um but one was how do we become more spiritually aware um they're asking for suggestions and resources and then the second question that i also feel like it comes with it is um, it, they didn't come together, but I just feel like they do is um, how to let go of fear, shame, anger, resentment and regret. And I feel like once you let go of that spirituality, just like, hello, I'm here. <laughs> like it's time because a lot of what is holding us back to be able to feel this spirituality, life purpose, all this good stuff is exactly what this other question says, fear, shame, anger, resentment and regret. Um, and I think a lot of that, um, and I also have a video about that, by the way, if anybody wants to watch. But I, I think a lot of what it, this begins with is just self-awareness. Um, putting your shit out there and being like, and I don't mean telling people your business. I mean, just putting your shit out there and saying, all right, I'm going to lay it out and I'm going to figure it out. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, if I, I'm the problem, then I got to fix myself. If this people are the problem, then I need to find a way to fix that or separate myself from it or, or whatever it is. There's just a lot of crap. That all these words like fear, shame, anger, resentment, regret come from other people, right? And then we make a story about it in our minds and continue the the story along until we die. And then we die with all these negative words, right? So I just want to know what your thoughts are in regards to that. Well, go back to the whole labels thing. Think about what is spirituality? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's of the spirit, right? As right. soon as you acknowledge that you're more than this human body, that there's a spirit in you and there's more to you, that's it, you're spiritual. Right. That's your spirituality. Right, bang there now. The nature of that, how you define that and stuff, that's going to be individual to you. That doesn't make you not spiritual. Mm -hmm. Just because you might have a different definition from me doesn't make you not spiritual. You're, you've got your own spirituality and I've got my own. Mm -hmm. Now, I know the thing with the whole kind of fear, shame, a lot of that is, I mean, think about it. That's how we're brought up. That's not, that's not the, when you're a kid, be good. You know, you should be ashamed of yourself. Why did you do that? So we're taught and we have an inner child. So because we, you know, our parents did that to us or teachers did that to us. No, you know, they did the best that they could. They were trying to teach us something. We did it to ourselves, but we've taken it to the extreme. We've taken it to the extreme mm -hmm. where we are, you know, we're judging ourselves all the time. And who are we to judge? I would, that's why I would say to people, you can't judge anyone. All you can say is, does this work for me or not? If it doesn't work for me, bye. Like, you know, just I'm going, I'm going to leave it behind. You do you. That's my thing for everyone. You do you. I, I think I keep it very simple in my life. This is my idea of spirituality and what all of this is. I want to. And it, that's getting over the guilt and the shame thing is. It's okay, not just okay. I am me. 
I am me. I am authentically who I am. In any given moment, I could be saying this stuff to you. Tomorrow I might wake up and change my mind. That's true for me then. And if someone says to me, but you were saying this in the video, well, so I'm someone else now. I believe something else now. Something else happened to me. I've grown and I think that <laughs> Exactly. Right. The only freedom, the only free, and it's okay. That I, I mean, it's okay to change your mind. You're always learning. Why would you, st you don't, but you don't listen to the same music you did like from 10 years ago. So why, you know, you, we change. Well, yeah, exactly. There's a bad example there. <laughs> but you, do you know what I mean? I was listening to Tupac all day and it's like, yeah, all right. Um, but yeah, you know, it's that whole thing of it's okay to be just whoever you are in this moment. That's you. That's who you are. Now, we fear judgment, but think about it. We go around judging other people. So obviously we think what's going on in our head is going on in other people's. But what does it matter? It doesn't affect who you are. And that's the only freedom that counts in this world is for you to be able to be who you are, mm -hmm. to love the things that you love, to do whatever you love, you know, to just be you. And I think that's what for me spirituality is, is to get you to that point where you work through all the other stuff. You work through all the inner turmoil and the questions that, and they come up in everyone. I mean, I get them still, mm -hmm. you know, I'll get that response. It's just that I have tools now to deal with it. Um, I know that the guilt and the shame thing, I've talked about it before with people, it's when, you know, codependent people and a lot of empaths are, and that's a whole different talk we could do just on that on its own. But, um, you know, to say no to someone because you're projecting, I think I can't say, like, say you said to me, oh, Jay, will you do a talk with me? And I say, I didn't want to do it, but I'm like, oh shit, then that's bad. I've told him I'm going to do it now. I'm thinking for you. Mm -hmm. Don't think for other people. Mm -hmm. Don't think, for, you just think for yourself. Does this work for me? And be true to that. Be true to that. And it's, it takes practice like anything else. You're going to feel that guilt. That's because you've been trained to. Think about it. You've done it your whole life. As a kid, you learned that. You ha it's unlearning it. And it just happens with practice. Yeah, Love does. yourself through it. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. And then one last question. Mm -hmm. um, how do we manifest things or people into our lives? Because okay. so somebody asked um, that you mentioned a lot of manifestation in your readings. And they just kind of want you to clarify that. That's, I mean... On my dailies, that's one of my hashtags, hashtag manifesting with the tarot. Mm -hmm. And at the very base, like, to do it just for tarot readings, my, my very basic information when I say, I did it on one of my videos actually, I did timeless love readings. And I said, when you watch it, if you like the story, give it a hell yeah. And you know, raise your vibration to that. And just put yourself in that story. This can happen to me. If you don't like it, you give it a hell no. This is not for me. But how we manifest, like the very basics on this, and I have a lot of information on my website on this. I've done hours of talks. Mm -hmm. Is you do not manifest from your affirmations, from what you say, from what you do. You manifest from your vibration. And so, if um, a lot of people try to manifest a relationship by focusing on a person, you can't manifest a specific person because you're trying to hijack their free will which you can't do and I wouldn't recommend that you do that anyway um, so when you want anything you want it because it's going to make you feel a, look, you're Bentley it's because it's going to make you feel a certain way right mm -hmm. that's why you wanted the Bentley and stuff because it's going to make you feel a certain way so most people say for a relationship if I want a relationship it might be because I'm lonely because I'm lonely and I get this a lot from people how do I manifest a relationship all right why do you so what do you want why do you want it? People forget the why do you want it? That's the most crucial question you can ask. And so I might be, I want a relationship because I'm lonely. Okay, so don't, you have to not be lonely. Right. You have to not be lonely. You have to vibrate at that. So for me, it might be then, okay. And then I tell people all the time, go hang out with your friends. Go hang out with people that you love. Go make new friends. They're like, I don't want friends. I want a lover. And that's like, go hang out with friends. You'll have so much fun. You'll raise your vibration. You'll feel in love. You will bring it in. It's just like attracts like. That's that's the very basics of it. I mean, you get more in depth, but that's the basic of it, that your vibration, you cannot fake a vibration. So all this positive thinking, slap a smile in it, fake it, you know, what? fake the funk, fake it till you make it. That's all bullshit. You're not going to manifest shit from that. Right. It, don't go, just, it, it might get worse later down the line if you're faking it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, one of the things that came up this week, actually, with someone, they just couldn't understand this. They're like, I'm not. I mean, I said it by myself. I, I don't. I don't go around criticizing people or judging people. I just don't do that because I don't care. You do whatever the hell you want. It's up to me if I want to be in your space or not. That's my choice. That's all I have a choice over. You do whatever. Um, but sometimes I'll get people that criticize me or come at me, right? And so they say, if like att attracts like, how am I attracting that? Because I'm criticizing myself. Mm. 
It's not how you treat other people. It's how mm -hmm. you treat yourself. Mm -hmm. Are you honoring yourself? Are you being true to yourself? Are you like, uh, say you're, and we lie to ourselves all the time. You know, people that attract liars and things like, because we lie to ourselves. I don't want that. I don't need that. So whatever relationship you want with someone else, I'm using relationships as an example, because that comes up a lot. But you have to, you know, you have to treat yourself like that, like value. If you want money, do you value yourself? So why the hell is anyone else going to value you if you don't value yourself? Right, right. You got to live in it and be about it to get it. Right? Absolutely. You can't just be like, hey, words, words, words and hope it happens, you know. And like you yeah. said, if you put a see, it's also the way you kind of manifest it verbally to yourself or, or subconsciously when you're like, I'm lonely. I wish I had this is might be better to say it a different way where it's like, I'm going to go raise my vibration and hope for the best. Or something like that, right? I mean, even that, yeah. that way of trying to think a little more positive and, and bring it, it's going to give it to you. Do you believe in um, real-time manifestation? What do you mean, like, immediately? immediately? You can have it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I will tell you this. As someone, I have manifested everything on my list several times in my life. Mm. And I'm at a place now where I'm 100%, I believe in manifestation, 100%. Mm -hmm. And it's probably been about a year, I don't manifest anything. And when you get to that point where you can manifest anything, you actually don't want anything. Because right. what you realize is that it, it comes to you anyway. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm getting a slap, whether I get a hug, whether I'm getting stolen from, whether I'm getting given a gift, it's all a gift. Mm -hmm. Everything is a gift. And I'm at that place now where I'm, I don't want anything. Mm -hmm. And I said this, I said this back in July in the first six months of this year, my life changed. A lot of my life just changed. And I got to this place where I thought, I don't actually want anything. I don't need anything. I don't want anything. And it was like a night and day change in who I was. And yet I wasn't earning more. My relation, I was still single. My relationship status hadn't changed. Job was the same. Clients the same. Living in the same. Nothing had changed. But it was the way I was looking at things. I see everything as a gift. I see everything is helping me. The universe is like Amazon, right? And you just, we're manifesting all the time. Anyway. So when we talk about manifestation, what we're talking about is conscious manifestation. Mm -hmm. And I think if you want to manifest, not to put anyone down, because we all go through this. And trust me, I've done it. I spent years learning manifestation. Is why do you want it? That's what the key thing is. Why do you feel incomplete without the person, the thing? Now, that's fine. I will still help people try to get it because I think I will help people get what they want, manifest what they want. And I've helped a lot of my clients do that. We've worked on things. I've got done, gone specifics with them. But when when it's like they've had it for a month or two and it's like, oh, my God, I'm still unhappy. I've got a relationship. I'm still unhappy. I've got a house. I'm still unhappy. That's when you think that's and that's happened to me. That's mm -hmm. what used to happen to me. And now I don't want for anything. Everything right. is a gift. I don't manifest at all. The, well, not consciously like sit and manifest anything. And you're going with the flow, which is a lot better sometimes. But I'm just in this this moment. It's like, say this moment, I decided I'm, I'm done with this. I'll be like, hey, hun, great talk, but I think I need to go. I'd right. just be true to that. Right. That's that's how I live my life now. And I think if you bring it down to that moment, you know, have a plan. You know, know where you're going. Every one of us has a mountain that we want to climb. But if you climb a mountain, think about it. You still look down at your feet. What's your next step? That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. One step at a time, you'll get up the mountain. But where you are right now matters. If I'm not right now i don't care how happy i'll be when i get to the top of the mountain i want to be happy now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i could be hit by a bus in 10 minutes like do you know what i mean right. it won't have mattered right but now is all that matters to me yeah awesome well i don't have any more <laughs> questions from your audience i mean i think i answered all of them um more of a personal question um your favorite food <laughs> my favorite food oh my god okay um i'm actually part of my illness stuff is i actually love bread like i'm a bit of a breadaholic mm -hmm. and it's the only thing that i miss because i'm gluten-free now because uh -huh. I, I have celiac disease mm -hmm. and so i, I mean i've done talk i've did, did questionnaires i used to record questionnaires and stuff and i think i actually had like bread porn in the title of it because i was like i love bread <laughs> like a fresh for bread something very simple um, and I can't eat, and I know there's some great gluten-free alternatives out there, but it, you can't beat like a good, fresh, 
loaf of bread that's been cooked and mm. stuff. So right now, top of the head, but you could ask me in an hour and I'd probably pick something else. <laughs> <you know? laughs> what what about you? What's your favorite? Um. Oh, my God. Everything. I mean, I, 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 oh my, no, you have to pick one now. <laughs> uh, right now, right now. I Actually, when I finish with you, maybe I'll go get some sushi because that's that's kind of hitting me right now. Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> I love that too. Yeah. Um, favorite music? Okay, so that's a bit of a weird one. Um, and one of the things that, that people think with spiritual music, I do not, I don't sit and meditate and listen. I do sometimes listen to chants, mm -hmm. but I like upbeat stuff. It's yeah. because I think I think it's the, the fire in my chart. Me I too. like energy and the way I shuffle and stuff. Everything's energetic, and so it depends on my mood. I do listen to a lot of Tupac. I was listening to Tupac all day today. I just love him. I think anyone that there's very few people that have the ability to move the way that he did with his words and yeah. I love him I love Tupac he's one of the people that when I'm in a dark place I'll go to Tupac and it reminds me of of you know someone once said to me they go oh my god she's like loves Tupac. she's they said you're my Tupac and I was like that's like the greatest compliment anyone's <laughs> ever given me <laughs> because I love Tupac but I love anyone that has that gift with words like Tupac Christopher Hitchens who's an atheist and he did a lot of talks mm -hmm. and stuff but music I like anything that's upbeat uh, not always like sometimes I listen to something very slow. I'm very mood oriented. I don't have bands that I like, apart from too bad. I don't have bands that I follow religiously. If it catches my, it just, it, I, don't, I can't explain it. Music is life. Mm -hmm. Music is yeah, life. It is. You know, it's it all, is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, movies, maybe top three. Oh, I'm going to kill you. No. you should, if you had told me you were going to do this, I might not have done it. I wouldn't have told you, though. <laughs> I know, I know. That's fine. Um, movies, okay. So one of my favorites, one that I'm really excited about at the moment is I want to go watch Creed 2. I'm a big That's fan so of the That's so crazy. I'm watching that right now. <laughs> you see? I'm going to kill you. No. Oh, my God. I, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of when I was ill. And I remember because um, obviously my dad would come home from and he said, what is the point? I pay for all these channels on the TV. Mm -hmm. And he goes, all you ever watch is Rocky. Rocky. I think I used to watch Rocky. <laughs> Uh, the Godfather uh -huh. and I don't know what each other one but he said you just watch the same movies again and again because they're not my friends right yeah, yeah. Um, I like horror movies and stuff but Rocky does has a I can watch those again and again and again and a lot of the lines that I come out with oh my god so I literally started watching it this week I'm up to four I'm gonna try to get it because I want to catch up to Creed 2 but oh my god oh, what god. a classic I, I see to it <laughs> huh? are you have you just have you just started watching it? No, now? no, no, no. Like I'm oh. just reliving it all, and I'm like, oh, I've watched these movies so many times, and like I feel like I've watched it all. Like it's brand new yeah. this time, and I'm like, and now I'm, that, ooh, I'm like that. Oh yeah. my god, the end of Rocky two. Oh my you know, god, every <laughs> single time I'm like, get up, get up. Like I've seen it a million times, and I'm there every time. Like yeah. he's not gonna get up. He's not, he's gonna, not get gonna get up. Get up. But, <laughs> but I'm the same. Like you know when um. I always, when I get messages, I'll think of movies sometimes yes. and I give lines from movies. I'm the same because that's, mm -hmm. because that's how, when I, in tarot readings I do it, because that's that's how I understand the energy from the movie. Yeah. And I remember, I think Water Signs got a very, because they were giving up. You know, I got Water Signs message and I gave them that whole line from um, Mickey, R Rocky Five. Get up, you son of a bitch, because <laughs> Mickey loved you. Like I gave him that. Is this it? One more round. I didn't hear no bell. And I, I do that sometimes from Rocky. I love Rocky. Yeah. Should have got me started. Watch. I'm gonna have to go watch it now. No, yeah. <laughs> right, as soon as I'm done, I go get some sushi and then watch four. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, um, any inspirational message that you like to give us a little send off to your audience, which is probably gonna be more than my audience, um, but just in general, people of Earth, <laughs> all these human beings that are watching right now, something. I know we've given a lot, but I just want to one last memento that way you can um, inspire some people that are watching, please. All I would say to you is you are exactly where you need to be. Exactly. You know, you might be down in a puddle somewhere crying. You might have lost everything. But if you hadn't lost that, if you wouldn't have the space now for something new. So you are always exactly where you need to be to take that next step. Even if you don't know what that next step is, you know, it will come to you. Just move. Move one step forward. Even if it's to move away from something that's bad for you. It happens, you know, everything comes our way. Everything gets given to us. So always understand that I'm exactly where I need to be. What's my next step? And love yourself. 
love yourself like a motherfucker like you know no matter what's happening no matter what's happening when you when you fucked up sorry i'm swearing right at the end when you've messed up when you know when you have think i've just i've ruined that i lost my job i did whatever that's when you need to love yourself the most like you would for your kid if the kid fails the test you're gonna hug it and say don't worry we'll do better next time and so will you mm. um all i can say is i've been humbled <laughs> This is awesome. Thank you so much. No, this is awesome. Thank I mean, who would have thought? I mean, I remember I discovered you, I think, in August, and here we are in December talking. So, um, definitely everything that we've discussed is true. I want to say that I've been living it. I'm sure you've lived it even more. Um, it, it, you just do what you got to do, and then it'll, it'll get there. Um, but you can't Thank sit there you so watch. much for this opportunity to talk about this stuff. I live for these kinds of conversations. Me too. So, I love this. Me too. I've and enjoyed it's, it. I've it's enjoyed hard it to so find much. people to actually like. <laughs> sit down and talk about it but yeah i appreciate it so much if you wouldn't mind just telling us exactly where we can find you in case people watching may want to get a reading or your youtube and your instagram all that good stuff please um so aquarianinsight.com is the website um you can book readings on there um that's the website but aquarian insight if you search for it um i'm sure you'll link it right um yeah. to um to that's my channel and instagram is aquarian insight as well okay um and I guess that's it. Um, to the audience, I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, please let us know comments below if there's anything that we missed. Maybe we can address it um, after the after we post it. Um, maybe we can also meet up. Maybe I don't know in six months from now and do this again. Maybe get gather some more questions, more in depth questions, even even deeper. Who knows where we'll be in six months? But um, Jay, I really appreciate your time, your wisdom. Everything you've done for me personally, it's just, it's amazing. I love it. We're in a hell of a time. It's just getting better. And, and uh, for all of you that may think otherwise, I really um, suggest you looking into um, a lot of what, what, what lights that fire in you. And then you'll see that we're in this crazy time of just awesomeness. Um, a lot of bad, but also a lot of good. And I think the good is going to win in the end because we have a lot of things that are happening, such as these discussions that are just going to bring out the best in people. And I think we're going mm -hmm. there. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. I'll see you around. Thank you so much. All right. Yep. No, to my people, you. yes. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you around. Peace. Okay.